I mean, the first thing is to understand what a limit is. Oops. I'm having real problems here today. I don't know why, but let's get rid of that for a second. <coughs> if you have, if you're asked to find what is a limit of a function, this one is a nice function that has no places where it's undefined. It's whatever it looks like. It's some polynomial or something like that. What you're saying when, when you're asking what is the limit as you approach 2 is you're saying, as I'm sure it doesn't look like that, but whatever, let's just do this. As you approach 2, what happens, what does this function look like it's heading for? Not what is it at 2, what is it heading for as you get closer from either side? If for this particular case, those are two of the same things, right? If this function is 21 at 2, it also looks like it's heading for 21. If it happened to be a function that was defined like this, where it looked like it should be 20, 21, but someone actually said, no, it's really 26, it's still the limit is 21, even though the function value is 26. For most functions or for all polynomials, for all of these things, the limit is going to be either what the, what the function is defined to be or what the missing value looks like it should be. This one you can sub it in just the same. This one you can't sub it in because you get zero on the bottom. Your first choice, if you're trying to evaluate a limit after that, is to use some, use some algebra, okay? If you can algebraically change this, you can see what the limit is. That limit is the same as if you simplify it. You can make the top part x plus 2, x minus 1, over x minus 1 because then you can change it to this. That's going to be the same as the limit of just that simpler function. All right? All, you, all you're doing when you do that is, before it was a function that was a straight line with a missing value, when you cancel the factors, the other function is exactly the same, but with that value filled in. If you want to create a function like that, just say, hey, I want to graph this 3x plus 2 it's going to look like a straight line like this. If I multiply it by x plus 1 over x plus 1, what does a graph of that look like? Exactly the same as that with a hole at negative 1. If I add those factors, because I haven't algebraically changed it, all the values along there are going to be the same. When you, when you put in that factor that cancels, that's all it is. So if you're, if you're given something like this where you can cancel and work with it, you can do that because then you can sub in the number. At this point, you can sub this in. 1 plus 2 gives you 3. Isn't that exciting? It's a learning calculus class. 1 plus 2 is 3. This is your, this is your first choice if you can't sub it in right away. If, you, if, if algebra is not going to work, like this one, can we use some algebra to simplify that so that we can sub in the value? You can't, right? You, can, you, can, you can't sub it in now because it's dividing by zero. You can't change it algebraically so that it's not. Whatever you do with it, it's still going to give you dividing by zero. Your only other option there is to look at it on a graph or a table or something to see what's going on. Do you know what this graph looks like? Uh, just off the top of your head, or maybe not off the top of your head. I'll make a. I'll draw a small little version of it here. It looks like it has an asymptote at at one, and it looks like that, and it looks like that. Okay. If I was to approach one from either side here, from this side, is I if I come from that side. What happens to the values of y? What, where do they go? They go up there, right? They go up to infinity. If I come from the other side, though, from this side of 1, where do the values of y go? Negative infinity. So which is it? Oops. Which is it? If you ask what is the limit if I come from the right, you told me an answer. You said it's positive infinity. So if you wanted to write something, you can say you can say here that the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side, which is the positive side, right, for this, the limit of this as you come from the positive side of 1 over x minus 1, that's equal to infinity. But the limit as you come 
from the other side, one from the negative side of that is negative infinity. Since these are different, these two things are different, since those are different numbers, can you say anything about just the limit without talking about the side? Just saying what's the limit as x approaches 1 of that? As in, these are one-sided limits. This is a two-sided limit. When you talk about just the limit, without the plus or the minus, you're talking about the two-sided limit. The two sides have to be the same. The two sides are not the same, so this is, uh, they, I mean, you could say undefined, but they, they usually say does not exist. I don't know why they say that. The limit does not exist. Okay, the limit does not exist because the two sides are different. Let's. Good morning. Here are your Tuesday morning announcements, and first of all, at the.